Welcome to the blah 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 podcast. Blah 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 You are listening to the Drunken Pen Writing Podcast. I'm your host, Caleb James. With me today is Spencer, the Winchester Wiener Wiggler Church. Hey. Weenie Wiggler. Is, it, is that better? I mean, I guess as long as it's mine, Wiener. That I didn't I'm say wig- whose. That I'm wiggling. Didn't say whose. I'm going around waggling other people's wieners. Well, waggling, that's a whole different motion. Wiggling and waggling, wiggling. completely different. Yeah, true. Completely different. What are we doing? Seven know. science fiction books for fans of Black Mirror. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know what we're doing <laughs> today. I think we had a stroke earlier. I don't know what happened. Okay, so you want the first book on this list. This is fantasyreviews.com. Are you uh, frequent fantasyreviews.com? I, I do not. I know my... You sent me this article. I don't. Well, just, how'd you come across it? Because just every once in a while, I'll get like like uh, notifications of like popular whatever books for August or eight ways they fucked up Spider Man or you know like you know what I mean. It's different things like that. So like that one uh, popped up one time. And I was like, oh, that that seemed kind of interesting. I can't remember. I, I I went to to look to see if there was any that I recognized, but it's been a while since I sent it to you, so I don't really remember what's on there. Yeah. Yeah. A um, book side, imagine. Well, I didn't read the I didn't even look at the list. Not until now. Not until now. You haven't even watched Black Mirror, have you? I've seen, like, the first, like, two seasons, I think. Those were the best. Yeah. I got the, you know, the, the, the pig fucking episode. And... Well, that's, like, the very first episode. That pedophile episode was pretty rough. Yeah. That was fucked up. The space one was really good, too. I think, I forget what season that was, but, uh... Let's see, I think that's whenever I fell off, I didn't get it, because I think that was, like, the beginning of one of the seasons. What was, like, a Star Trek episode? It was an episode where a virtual reality game or something this guy mm-hmm. created, he, uh, basically has his co-workers in the game as slaves, and uh. they have some kind of sentience, something or other. It was pretty cool. They had the dude from, uh, one of the McPoyle brothers, I forget yeah. that guy's name. So, on this list, Spencer, we have seven science fiction books for Black Mirror fans. Well, the first one on this list, The Test by Sylvain Nouvelle. Mm. Or Nouvelle, maybe. Hideous cover. Yeah. The Test. It's just an X. No. I'm not a big fan of things that just change to X's randomly. (laughs) Yeah, you're not a fan of that? No, I'm not a big fan of just an X (laughs) for your uh, logo. You all right there? Do you have The Plague? Yes. I'm almost done with that. I got 40 pages left. Yeah, lucky you. <laughs> You're not liking it now? Well, no, I just, uh, I'm just hitting walls and trying to read it. Like, I'm, I'm like in like 120, so like I'm close to being like m- maybe halfway, like, you know. I power read the last two nights just to get through the damn thing. It's uh, not holding my interest the best. Yeah. It's, the, the story's fine. It's just the philosophical bits keep mm-hmm. like, like there's a bit about abstraction that went on. I was like, right. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. The allegory for Nazi stuff is kind of cool, though, but we'll talk about that on the actual episode. No, we're talking about the test right now, Spencer. Here's a blurb from the book. All right. I think I would have a synopsis before the blurb, but there is no synopsis, so we just get blurb. Yeah, blurb. Maybe, maybe they meant the, bla- the back blurb that is the synopsis. synopsis. Maybe. I'm thinking of a quote. I'm incorrect. My brain's frizzled today, even more so than normal days. So from the blurb, Britain, the not-too-distant future... Adir is sitting the British citizenship test. He wants his family to... Am I speaking English right? It seems like you're missing some words. I'm going to reread this because maybe my brain is... I'm I'm looking clearly, so maybe my brain will focus better. Britain, the not-too-distant future. Adir is sitting the British citizenship test. He wants his family to belong. 25 questions to determine their fate. 25 chances to impress. When the test takes an unexpected and tragic turn, a deer is handed the power of life and death. How do you value a life when all you have is multiple choice? Is a deer like nomadic or something? Why is he? Uh, I don't know. 
I don't, that didn't read right to me, but yeah, I read that, it correctly. Yeah, the beginning of that seemed really worded. So all these are just going to be blurbs, and nothing's going to tell us why we should read it or about the story. <laughs> or why it's related to, you know, a, a good takeaway from Black Mirror to this. Like, oh, you like Black Mirror? Read this book. Has nothing. So I'm not actually cribbing anything from no. this article. I can't steal anything because this is just blurbs from the book. So Yeah, because, I mean, you would assume, like, okay, that's probably some kind of science fiction, but they don't let you know that by... yeah. I have a sneeze that's trying to come, but it's mm. up in my brain. And mm. I just watched a video of a guy who pulled a leech from his fucking out of his nose from the top of his brain. Uh, like they just stuck this thing. I was going to send it to you, but it's gross. And I was just like, ah, now I got a leech up there. Yeah, so that's itchy. That's probably probably what it is. Uh, this next one is by an author that we definitely need to read because Neil Gaiman always mentions her. So we should probably get on it. Uh, the book is The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin. Mm. I always hear of her work, but I never read anything. The blurb. In a future world racked by violence and environmental catastrophes, George Orr wakes up one day to discover that his dreams have the ability to alter reality. He seeks help from Dr. William Haber, a psychiatrist who immediately grasps the power George wields. Soon George must preserve reality itself as Dr. Haber becomes adept at manipulating George's dreams for his own purposes. Mm. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. That sounds, uh, sexy. Sounds like one of those, because what are you dreaming about? Yeah, oh, yeah. What if he has a wet dream? Does yeah. uh, people in real life get a little moist? Yeah, get a little aroused. Some of my dreams are violent, Yeah. so uh, that wouldn't be good for the world. No. I had a dream the other night, and it was really irritating because I was, like, stuck in school, but I was my age. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, why am I here? It's like, this is bullshit, and, like, they wouldn't let me leave. And I'm like, I can, I'm older than you. I'm older than the teacher. <laughs> Fuck this. Stupid. Next up, version control by Dexter Palmer. You're a big Dexter Palmer fan, aren't you? Huge Dexter Palmer guy. Palmer Knight. Now that cover's kind of interesting. It's just a melted face. Yeah. From the blurb, Rebecca Wright has reclaimed her life, finding her way out of her grief and depression, and depression following a personal tragedy years ago. She spends her days working in customer support for the internet dating site where she first met her husband. But she has a strange, persistent sense that everything around her is somewhat off-kilter. She constantly feels as if she has walked into a room and forgotten what she intended to do there. On TV, the president seems to be the wrong person in the wrong place. Her dreams are full of disquiet. Meanwhile, her husband's decade-long dedication to his invention, the causality violation device, which he would greatly prefer you not call a time machine, has effectively stalled his career and made him a laughingstock in the physics community. But he may be closer to success than either of them know, knows or can possibly imagine. Hmm. That sounds a bit like uh, 1Q84, but not as good. Yeah. It's so 1Q84, she goes into uh, alternate reality without realizing it, and things are just slightly different, and it fucks with her, but it's hmm. done very well. Kind of almost feels like she's going crazy, probably. Oh, yeah. Going nuts. So next up, Love Minus 80 by Will McIntosh. Macintosh. But it's not M A C, it's just M C, so it's Macintosh. That's how I would say Macintosh. You don't get to be a Mac. Now you're coughing too. There's something in the air down Maybe, here. Maybe, yeah. The old missus was down here sweeping, yelled at me for not sweeping. Maybe she stirred something up. Or maybe the world outside's on fire again. I didn't really look today. It was a little bit warmer today than it the was past couple of days. It was hot. It was hot. I was hot. Yeah. From the blurb. In the future, love is complicated. Is it really, Spencer? Uh, well, Not complicated so. now, just the future? Uh, I don't know. Well, maybe we'll find out why. Technology moves ever forward. To be disconnected from the maze of social networking is to be an outcast. Is that different from now? Uh, uh, hardly. Even death doesn't have to be the end. An impossible love story is about to unfold between a hit-and-run victim and her killer. So that does go along the lines of some episodes of Black Mirror because they have the social media episode. Mm. Then they also have another episode about a virtual reality world where a couple gets together and it turns out one of the couples is like really old on a deathbed yeah. or something or other. Well, there, was, there was like a like a thing for like senior citizen or like whenever you were going to die, you could like upload your yeah. conscious into like a like a thing. Saint. Oh, people are going to be mad that yeah. I can't remember the name, but it was like Saint something or other. I did watch all the Black Mirror episodes. I just some of them. Were, I wasn't one. I'm not a, a mirror, a mirror knight, mirror holic. I'm not the biggest Black Mirror. Like, I like Black Mirror, and I like a lot of the episodes, but I'm not like... I think a new season came out. I didn't watch any. Yeah. I was like, I'm not hardcore on it. 
I like the the idea and the concept of the show, but not, you know the watching it as much. I'm a big Twilight Zone guy, so Black Mirror is just the technology version of that. Mm-hmm. But the problem is now technology has gotten to the point where they can't really do much on the show that's not either already happened, going to happen, or even worse, they're stealing from. Yeah. Because a lot of the episodes they've done, they're already doing in China, like the social media episode with the yeah. social credit score. That's already a thing. It's like, eh, stop predicting stuff that they're just going to oh, take quick, off of you. Quit giving people ideas. Yeah, don't do that either. Next up is All Are Wrong Todays by Ellen Mastai, E-L-A-N, Elan, Elon. Uh-oh. It's not Elon. Hideous cover. I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm not liking- When they're just words? Yeah, and the swirly background. I'm not liking these covers. I didn't show you the last one. It was just the- That one's okay. It's just somebody poking a social yeah. media screen and you're inside the screen, which is kind of cool. From the blurb. You know the future that people in the 1950s imagined we'd have? Well, it happened. In Tom Barron's 2016, humanity thrives in a techno, techno-utopian paradise of flying cars, moving sidewalks, and moon bases where avocados never go bad and punk rock never existed because it wasn't necessary. Except Tom just can't seem to find his place in this dazzling, idealistic world, and that's before his life gets turned upside down. West Philadelphia. Born and raised. raised. That's kind of upside down, I want to Utterly blindsided by an accident of fate, Tom makes a rash decision that drastically changes not only his own life, but the very fabric of the universe itself. In a time travel mishap, Tom finds himself stranded in our 2016. What we think of as the real world, for Tom, our normal reality seems like a dystopian wasteland. We think it's a dystopian, dystopian wasteland. Yeah. Like, we know it sucks. We know uh, There's literally constant jokes about we're in the wrong timeline. Like, everyone knows yeah. it sucks. So, fucking Tom, we were, we're there with you. How do you make that original? Now we are on to More Than This by Patrick Ness. I'm, I'm not trying to shit on these people, but I'm Never not digging cover. any of the titles. Yeah. Any of the titles. Oh, and the covers. That's an ugly ass cover, too. Yeah. The problem is most of these are modern books, or all of them are modern books, maybe. I don't know when Ursula K. Le Guin wrote that book, but modern covers are hideous. For some reason, they're just bland and generic. Even the Ursula K. Le Guin cover here is just ugly as fuck it's just a fucking woods or something yeah and it has cheap fucking printing but also like at least she had a cool title the lathe of heaven like it's different but most of these are just the test the vert well version control that's similar to that that's kind of unique i don't know the love minus 80 all around like, yeah what does that even mean yeah you're just like more than this more than this i guess how that- generic can you get more than this it's just one of those things, like, hopefully that once you read the story, the title makes sense, baby. Uh, so more than this by Patrick Ness. A boy drowns, desperate and alone in his final moments. He dies. Then he wakes, naked and bruised and thirsty, but alive. How can this be? And what is this strange, deserted place? As he struggles to understand what is happening, the boy dares to hope. Might this not be the end? Might there be more to this life? Or perhaps this afterlife? Uh, that doesn't sound that good. Actually, the story sounds interesting, but the title, more than this, so generic. Do better, Peter. I never know how to pronounce this one. Valis or Valise by Philip K. Dick. Mm, I don't know. See, now you go back. He's got like a funky cover. Yeah. Because he was on meth. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Valis is the first book in Philip K. Dick's incomparable final trio of novels, the others being The Divine Invasion and The Transmitigation of Timothy Archer. See, I don't ever remember hearing those one, hearing of those ones. Those were his last books before he died. I don't think they were as popular. This disorienting and bleakly funny work is about a schizophrenic hero named Horse Lover Fat. Mm. <laughs> the hidden mysteries of the hidden mysteries of Gnostic Christianity in reality as revealed through a pink laser. Valis is a theological detective story in which God is both a missing person and the perpetrator of the ultimate crime kind of cool but what's with philip k dick and these theologies he throws in these sci-fi books it's like i don't know it's probably the uh what he's thinking when he's all strung out and hide up like like what was the big thing in uh android's dream of electric sheep mercerism or something like some yeah. made up stuff uh, that's it that was the list I, i'm not gonna read a single book on that list i didn't nah. i didn't like that list i hated that list i hated it and because they didn't give us a real synopsis. Yeah, yeah, that probably that didn't help. Or, it may, or told us why we should. Uh, why they would relate to Black Mirror if you're a fan. Yeah, or why we should even read them. 
Well, that was kind of a dookie article. Yeah. And it only netted us 16 minutes plus right. it's cold open. So now what do we do? I don't know. Uh, maybe we could talk about uh, the the good things of just like the dark mirror, like dark mirror, like a uh, dark mirror. Black, You're not even getting mirror, the, yeah. the title right. <laughs> uh, black mirror. Um, because like what what I always kind of liked about the series whenever I watched it was just like the swinging for the fences. Yeah. Of, of of a lot of like you know the episodes and just the um the different takes and all the different technologies. Like if you. You kind of get the feeling that almost like the creators are really like um, uh, technophobes almost. Yeah. But, oh, but also know their shit also too because... Maybe that's why they're scared of it. It'd be hard to make up some of that stuff if you didn't know, mm. you know what I mean, have, you know, at least had like a, a, a kind of understanding of some of that kind of like future technology. All the tech in that show, unlike some other shows from the past, was very realistic and yeah. could be invented or already is invented. Like they had the... The thing that you could like replay your memories or yeah. something and get like blackout drunk and you yeah. replay what happened like that was cool. They had a lot of really cool episodes in the first few seasons and then it started getting a little more hit and miss. Mm. And then by the end, I just like you, I think I just kind of petered out. Like I watched them, but I don't, I couldn't even remember most of like the episodes. Like there was one with Anthony Mackie and he gets in a video game and falls in love with the dude who's uh. a woman in the anime or. I think they're like anime characters or something in this world. Or was it a fighting game? Whatever it was, the guy who played a female and the dude was a male. And I think they were both black males. And then in the real world, they finally meet. And it's like, oh, should I be gay now? I'm not yeah. gay in the real world. And it's just like, eh, and it rises, it raises some interesting questions of what it means to fall in love with a person and not mm. their gender, I guess. But. At the same time, I was just like, a lot of the episodes started going towards relationship stuff. Yeah. And I was just like, ah, I kind of want to see some more, like, you know, murder robots and stuff. Right, like, uh, there was that one episode early on where it's like, uh, it's like these two, like, I think it's like these two people are, like, on, like, are being, like, hunted by, like, a town. And it's like... It's something that keeps recycling. Yeah, yeah, yeah recycling. It's like, like a, a, a punishment? Yeah. I I thought that was a pretty cool episode, and like what you talking about before, like the uh, like the child porn episode, like that was yeah, that, really that was a fucking, fucking ooh, that was a rough one. It's really good though. Here I got here. This is what we'll do. Yeah, like best Black Mirror episodes. Yeah, twenty eight Maisie Day. The message at the core of Maisie Day is Admiral Paparazzi tabloids and fans are what drives celebrities to monstrous behavior. Uh, I did not watch that one. Yeah, that, that must one. be one of the new ones. Yeah, that one doesn't sound familiar to me. Twenty-seven play test. This was a cool one. It's a story about the potential perils of implanting a computer chip in your brain and experiencing a virtual world. Structured as a play on haunted house horror films, blending video game elements and supplying a constant stream of twist. The real problem with play test is that it never amounts to much more than a critique of the technology itself. Uh, that one was like a guy gets implanted in a video game and then like he's trying not to die because he'll die for real or mm. something. And it's like his haunted house and all this cool shit happens. And then I think it turns out like he's only in there for a second and he just died. Like yeah. it didn't work. 26, the Waldo moment. That one irritated me. That was where that guy ran as a political uh, candidate as a big cartoon bear. Oh, yeah. I do think Wal- I'm, and there's yeah. Waldo and uh, that. Well, let me see what they have to say about it. Uh, the episode is about a comedian who performs as an angry motion capture cartoon bear for a satirical TV show, uh, eventually running the cartoon as a candidate in a uh, election here. And let's see. And now that we live in a world in which Donald Trump is the Republican presidential nominee, the Waldo moment is at once admirably prescient while feeling just a little too easy with its. Cr- OK, so basically it's just shitting on Republicans mm-hmm. and political just politicians. Yeah, in general. this one was a good one. Twenty five White Christmas with John Hamm. The episode packs three separate stories and a framing device into only 75 minutes, and the lack of room to breathe makes it feel less like Black Mirror than a Black Mirror pastiche. That said, the individual mini-stories are all quite inventive, and the presence of John Hand throughout the episode makes for an entertaining dive into the many worlds Charlie Brooker has to offer. Maybe I'm incorrect. I thought that was the one where the guy was, like, in a cabin, and, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I watched it too long ago. 24, Demon 79. Batship performance, a demon who dresses as a guy from the Rasputin band. This is one of the new ones I uh, yeah. I say that see. doesn't sound familiar to me. This thing's like trying to kill me with pop ups. Twenty three Black Museum. I'm about to speed through these. Yeah, uh, that was a good one. That was uh, 
that had like three stories in it, I think. It was uh the end of a season, I believe, mm. or something. Makes makes sense. Yeah. Twenty two, Joan is awful. Joy same as home, Netflix, blah blah blah. That's a new one about chat GPT. That yeah. one could maybe be interesting. Yeah. I heard the new season only had like one good episode, and that was the Aaron Paul one. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I do remember hearing about that. Yeah. Twenty one, fifteen million merits. That was a cool one where people were in this fucking you dystopian uh Really, like a warehouse or something where they have to watch TV and all. Oh everything's yeah, ads. and you like had to like ride a bike and stu- yeah, like to earn, stuff. Yeah, earn credits. Like one thing the credits could be used for is to fucking shut off the ads so you can sleep, mm-hmm. or if not, they just blare all around you in this tiny room while you sleep. And then there's like a you could like climb up the thing so like people would be watching you instead yeah. of you watching people. And there's like an American Idol type of audition mm-hmm. you can like you know get a better place and stuff if people like you i think that that had the uh the guy from get out in it yeah I, I think so i forget that guy's name uh 20 men against fire this was the one that was like about a war and they wore this technology that made them look like they were killing these giant roach things and they thought oh yeah we're doing good we're killing monsters oh, they, but they're regular people right? turns out they're just regular people which is, uh, is like a, a take on you know how war takes the humanity out of the soldiers like it makes them just think of everything as like a a threat versus like the, like uh vietnam and the trolleys the trolleys you know they're just they're not people anymore yeah. yeah they're just the other 19 beyond the sea this is the aaron paul one space race era astronauts have the technology to beam back and forth between their flesh and blood cells in the galaxy and robot vessels at home things of course don't go particularly well Buoyed by brilliant performances from Kate Mara, Rory Culkin, Josh Hartnett, and Aaron Paul. Is another Culkin did, brother? I didn't say, well, I was most surprised about Josh Hartnett. Like, I didn't think that guy did anything anymore. No, he doesn't. 18, Striking Vipers. Uh, that's the VR fighting game with Anthony Mackie. And he uh, falls in love with the other dude. 17 uh, is Nosedive. That's the Bryce Dallas Howard one. That's the one with, like, the social score and stuff. And she goes crazy because she keeps getting you know, negatives or like people are rating her badly and it affects her life. And then if you get low enough, everybody just hates your guts. 16 smithereens smithers. Uh, for, Oh, is that the, is that the one that guy in like London? Yeah. The guy in London has a, a gun and then there, nobody else has a gun. Cause I guess they don't have guns there. Something about, uh, something about what the fuck does this say? An Uberish driver haunted by a tragic event in his life. Uh, I don't know. I forget. It's fucking stupid. It was a mystery. And he uh, ends up talking to like this Jack Dorsey type of character and something else. 15 Bandersnatch. That's like the choose your own adventure one. That was interesting. Uh, 14 is Archangel. Um, I'm just going to blow through these. I don't fucking want to read this anymore. 13 is Metalhead. That's the one with the uh, the robot things that like just fuck everything up. Yeah. They're pretty cool. Which we invented after that episode dropped. We made those things. Uh, 12 is White Bear. I think that's the loop one you were talking about. Uh, 11 is Crocodile. That's the one where I think a girl falls in love with like a fake version of her guy who died. Oh, and then like makes like the, uh, like the, like kind of like the robot thing out yeah. of his, like, it starts out like his voice and stuff from like the, from like social media and, and messages yeah. and stuff. 10, Rachel, Jack, and Ashley, 2. That's the uh, Miley Cyrus one. 9, Shut Up and Dance. That's the uh, pedophile one, right? Maybe. Uh, they, 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 I'm not reading the synopsis because these are, like, really dog shit. They're not actually telling you. They're talking about, like, the creation, like, the writers and stuff, but they're not really talking about that, what the episode's about. Yeah, this is the one with the hacker. He hacks the kid, and the kid was... uh wanking it to some pornography that was illegal we'll just leave it at that mm. eight uss callister that's the space one like the star trek one that was really good seven lock henry i don't remember what that one's about visceral devastating people as flexible crimes no. six the entire history of you number five is hated in the nation number four hang the dj number three san junipero I think that, that's the yeah. one with the uh, old people. Yeah. Two, the national anthem. Why does everyone like the pig fucking episode? I don't know anybody that liked the pig fucking episode. Well, I think what it was was with that being the first episode in the series that really like set like the, oh, 
Oh, this is what this show is gonna kind of be about. But does it need to be number two? I don't. I don't think it's better than a lot of these. Number one, be right back. Uh, through darker, darker than San Junipero. Similar themes of death and loss make be right back. One of the most beautiful gut wrenching episodes of TV. I don't remember if I saw that one. Yeah. Uh, it would help if they fucking talked about it. It doesn't fucking even give a description. You know what? Two shit articles back to back. Yeah. Shit episode. DBS episode. Fuck it. You know what, Spencer? I'm sick of reading stuff. Yeah. I'm not doing it anymore. Sick. I'm sick of the fucking technology. I'm sick of AI taking over. That's what I'm sick of. Fucking asshole instigators. That would be interesting if they did a Black Mirror episode where they were in a writing room where they had AI make the episode for like a Black mm. Mirror episode, like use AI. Yeah. Like I think that cut would kind of be like an interesting. What did I? Yeah. I sent you that video of a guy who created an AI that just made infinite South Park episodes. Yeah. With any characters and made new characters. If you're an animator, that's got to fuck it. It's like, oh, I went to school to be an animator. Oh, wait, now we just have robots that do it. Don't need us anymore. Nope. Don't need a lot of things anymore. If AI really takes off and replaces a lot of writers on, I'm not even talking about just books, like mainly TV shows and movies, everything's going to get so bland and watered down because AI cannot create original content. Remember, like, the original idea of AI was, like, to, like, take care of, like, the jobs of, like, Hey, we'll be able to have like automatic like truck driving things and, and cashiers won't need to do yeah, that. Job. And, and like just like, you know, things like that, not like the creative stuff. No. Well, here's where we went wrong. Like the dangerous things. We started with like we did self driving cars and we were gonna have the trucks be self driving. We were gonna have the self checkouts, you don't need cashiers. And that was like the start of it. You go to McDonald's, they have the, you know, the robot mm. screen. You just press the buttons and eventually I'm sure they were going to have something make your food for you too, not even people. Then you'd have an all robot manned uh, store. I'm pretty sure somewhere there was like an all like robot Probably. Like McDonald's somewhere. Probably been in existence in Japan or something. And they also have, like, the Amazon stores, whatever. Like, you go in, you pick up your stuff. You know people work there, apparently. But here's the problem with all this shit. Those are all fine, but capitalism completely fucking ruined it because it went from like, oh, we can have people not do these shit jobs anymore and then everyone's happy and then they can focus on creativity. But what these assholes did was like, no, how about we have the people not do the shit jobs anymore, but no way, like we just take their job. Yeah. Like they don't get to have like a universal income so they can live. Like we didn't decide, oh, hey. People won't have to do these jobs anymore, but they still need to have some kind of way to get food and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we'll have programs set in place where if you lose your job, you can still be a member of society and just focus on better things like uh, creating art and writing and stuff like that. No, we didn't do that. We instead said, hey, here's what we do. The AI can take over these shit jobs and put people out of work and then we won't pay them anything. And also, we'll take over the creative jobs, and then those people will be out of work, and we don't have to pay them either. And then n all we get is a slave race where everyone is either homeless and poor, or they have to work, like, the shit jobs the robots can't even do. Right. Like, uh, I, I do remember listening somewhere, and they were talking about, like, AI, and they're like, well, if it does keep on going, like, the way that it's going, it's like, they are going to have to finally have some kind of universal... Like Basic income. Pay, income, yeah. yeah, because it's just like there's not, there won't be any jobs for anybody else, you know? Can I have a very controversial take here? Sure. And this is mainly because I just read Animal Farm last week. Okay. <laughs> so I'm all about uh, <laughs> fucking everything sucks because of greed. We have everything in place in this world where uh, nobody has to really work. Like, you, yeah, you'll still need doctors and yeah. stuff, but as far as the average citizen, People actually don't have to work. We have the technology that could just do most jobs for us, or we can create technology that'll cover almost every job that's not necessary for humans to do anymore. But the problem is people want to make money. Yeah. That's the main thing. And if you look at like the history of food, throughout the whole history of mankind, we've always, for the most part, have had an abundance of food. And most famines, at least in the modern era from... Let's even say the 1500s on, especially after the Industrial Revolution, though. We've had enough food for everyone, but because of capitalism and people wanting to make money, you actually get things, and this goes to, like, uh, Grapes of Wrath had a scene about this, where we, oh, 
we have enough potatoes for everybody, but we have to sell those potatoes, and if people can't afford to buy them, we dump them in the river and put armed guards at the river so people can't fish them out. Yeah. How fucking atrocious is that? That's the thing people actually did and still do. How many places uh, can you get arrested for if you dig in the dumpsters and fish out all the products that they threw away that are perfectly fine? Yeah. A lot of places, you're not allowed to do that. A lot of places used to donate food that they throw away, such as your Walmarts and stuff. Oh, perfectly good food, but we have to get rid of it at the end of the night because, you know, fresh food rules. Mm. Okay, fair enough. you got to get rid of the bagels. Are we allowed to donate the bagels to the homeless? Nope, sure can't because bureaucracy says that that is past its expiration date of one day. Yeah. So we have to throw these edible food stuffs away and nobody can have them. And all across the fucking shitty world, we've just followed that rule. You you want to hear a fucking disgusting like Walmart stat? Yes. So like I've been reading or on the weekends. I've been watching background. I think I told you before the foods that made America. Yeah. Where they started a new series that starts playing after that. It's like the mega com gomlets of that build America. Like these just big corporations yeah. that uh, and the first episode was Walmart and one of like they because like they at a commercial break they do like a fact thing and then when you come back they have the answer. You wanna take a guess on how much Walmart, like the whole company in general, makes a day? I don't know, but it's going to make me really, really mad. It's going to make you really mad. It's like one point some change billion dollars a day. Over a billion dollars a day. So essentially, they can probably pay like every employee a hundred bucks an hour. Yeah. Honestly. Easily. And still make a profit. A lot of profit. I don't understand why there isn't one company out there where the owner is just like, Fuck it. As long as I make a couple million dollars, you guys could make a million dollars working for me. Like, right? Why not? Why yeah. not make you, or maybe not a million, but why can't my employees, even if it's a menial job, $500,000? Because, like, what I don't get is, like, first couple points. First point is, I, what I don't understand is, like, so you want to try to cut down on like your normal staff workers that are just the regular uh, workers like at the store. Yeah. You do everything to try to you cut their hours. You don't want to give them raises, you know, treat them like shit. But there's like 15 lever layers of management. Who usually do dick all. That like. And get paid way more like, to do You know, it. like there's people that go around to the stores to check on things and that their only job is to come up with like random bullshit that you need to work on it, that doesn't matter most of the stuff doesn't matter because it's like they could come in one week and tell you something and then like come in a couple of weeks later and you'd be like oh look at we fixed it and he's like yeah but that thing over there like those the edges on those floors over there are fucking filthy like who gives a fuck about the edges of the floors over there. Like, what does that matter with anything? You Have know? you seen the average Walmart shopper? They don't care. No, like... They're lucky they can even survive. So it's like... They make, you know, a living. So, like, if you want to really make a profit, cut those fuckers out. Imagine how much money you save doing that and then trying to fucking uh, penny pinch your, your hourly associates. Isn't it amazing that almost every company spends way more on all this management to watch the people who actually make the store run right. or the business run, and they don't pay the people that make the business run hardly anything compared to what they pay the managers and everyone else. Now, I'm, I'm sure this has happened to you, but you've worked somewhere, and like you're either, for some reason, your boss is in schedule or had to leave or got sick or something, had to call off, and like nine times out of ten, it runs better Without the boss. Almost always. Because, like, the people know what they have to do. They, they know the, the tasks that need to be done. It's like you don't really... It, it's like, you know, those, like, that during that last season of The Office where Andy goes on that cruise, like, you know, on that cruise for, like, three months, and it's, like, the best quarter of the of their year that they ever had. Yeah. Without no boss. I'm just sick of the whole affair. I'm just sick of the way things run. Like, you have these offices where everyone had to work from home and everything just seemed to be way smoother and they spent mm. way less, there's way less overhead because you don't have this giant building you need yeah. and you don't need all these managers anymore. But what do they do? They're bringing people back to the office, forcing them to come back, mm. even though every study says that they work worse in offices, productivity goes down, oh, and then... Because you got to deal with the commute and... You're disgruntled. Yeah. And here's another thing. Get rid of the fucking eight-hour, 40-hour work week. Eight-hour right. a day, 40-hour work week. Most jobs, that's not needed. 
because most almost every job you get done you could do your job within a few hours mm -hmm. and then especially like office jobs and stuff a lot of times people would spend more time dicking off than they do the actual work right but they just have to be there so why not just do a quota system where it's like hey you have this amount of work to do today when you're done you just go and you get paid for the day yeah like my job has started to finally understand that where they kind of take it on and let us leave early some days and stuff now because it's like if you can finish a job in four hours or eight hours and you get paid the same, what are you going to do? Bust your ass and do the best you can to get done in four hours? Or are you going to milk it for eight hours mm -hmm. for no reason? Right. Because you know if you bust your ass, they're just going to give you more or something yeah. else to do. But convert, which always happens. If you get done early and you do your job, you get more work piled on you. Or even worse, take over some lazy fuck who did no work. Yeah. Now, conversely, if you have four hours worth of work you you can do and you're done but you have eight hours and you know that you have to work eight hours and like we said if you don't work the eight hours and come back with after four you'll just get fucked and get more work what are you gonna do yeah you're gonna fucking milk it yeah. and waste time and it's way more inefficient just let people do their job when because they do it way better than the bosses know how to do it the right. bosses never know how to fucking do the job managers never know how to do the job they just tell you how they think it should be done and it's always terrible and then you have to wait till they leave or, so you could do what you're gonna do anyway or they just tell you to get it done do the thing and it's like well do you really understand what needs to be done for that or how that affects other things and it's like they never do like oh you, know, you just get the blank look and you know of, de of deadness in their eyes the most annoying thing is when you hear the phrase well the numbers say oh. fuck the numbers because the numbers aren't the actual job the person doing the job is the one you should be asking hey does this product sell a lot no it doesn't we end up throwing away and just marking it off yeah you just writing it off it's like oh huh, well the numbers say that you know countrywide well this is one one state one yeah. store so maybe not countrywide Yeah. in this particular instance. Why don't you listen to your employees instead of over-ordering stuff that you don't need or having us clean garbage when you have a full store full of people well, or did, whatever dumb shit they want to do that day. Or to circle back to the AI technology thing, just of like, have you ever worked anywhere that has like, like a system, like an ordering system and things like that, and it's actually worked properly? No. No, like it's always fucked. Like the numbers are always wrong. You can go in there and refix them every day. The next day, they're just going to be screwed up again. It's like, why do we even have this thing? I've worked at places that have that shit in place just for the managers to override it to just, you know, so they can have their input. Right. And then that's usually what really fucks it up. And usually it's a person fucking it up because let's say you have a simple system of, you know, you work at a grocery store and it's like, oh, we're out of this can of soup. Like these cans of tomato soup were done. So we need to order this many and the numbers show that we sold this many last month. So we should order this many for the next month. Mm -hmm. But then you get one person who fucking say, now we need to override that because even though it says that's how many were sold last month, we should probably have way more mm -hmm. or maybe we shouldn't have enough. They only sold because it was this season yeah. and next season will be and then they don't listen to it and then they order what they want and it's fucked up. You overorder now. You're sitting on pallets of tomato soup. You're not going to sell, or you don't have enough for Thanksgiving. Like just well, who's eating tomato soup for Thanksgiving? But turkeys. Okay. Turkeys. <clears throat> That's one thing. It's like around the holidays, it's always like, oh, we're going to way or overorder everything, and then again, we go back to the waste. Let's all yeah. throw it away, write it off, and not let homeless people eat it. <laughs> Which in in this country, in most countries, have enough money, there shouldn't be homeless people. Here's here's my ending rant, Spencer. Because right. I'm hungry. I want to go eat food. I'm angry today. Two things piss me off more than anything. One, every fucking house I see that's been sitting for years for sale or rent or whatever it is, but the price is so high, nobody can get it. So we have way more houses than we have homeless people. <laughs> right. Doesn't make any sense. Two, the amount of fucking car dealerships we have and the amount of people who can't afford a car or have a shitty car. Yeah. Because it? they can't afford the car at the dealerships and the car dealerships just eventually send the cars back to scrap them down and recycle them yeah they uh what just on a on a main like not the highway but like an interstate g by s 19 there's what like five or six of them within yeah. a couple mile span uh, and like of like the same kind like not even like different kinds it'll be like the same kind of car dealership oh, it's annoying and it's just like how are you staying open like i know cars are expensive so if you sell a couple but it's just like i don't get what you're making the money off of it it's like all the mattress stores around yeah. Who the fuck is buying that many mattresses? I don't know. I think there's money laundering in those mattress stores.
a, like if we had let's say this socialist utopia and it actually worked out right everyone would just get the house and everyone would just get the car and preferably everyone would have a job where they feel like they're doing their part and they get paid a wage where they're like okay it's not a great job but i get paid a very good wage so i'll do it mm-hmm. and then they're happy like let's use walmart for example if walmart paid their employees I like to say the uh, shelf stalker, like somebody who unloads trucks and stock shelves. They paid them eighty dollars an hour. You ain't getting no complaints. Do you think that person's gonna fucking skip work, be fucking doing drugs all the time because yeah. they're living in the fucking projects? And no. But the problem is these companies don't want good employees. They just want the bare minimum that gets the work done so they can get as much money as possible well too because they uh they, what they want to do they want to cycle through the employees and it doesn't matter if like you know you have an employee you, you get them they fuck up they leave you hire them back they work for a little bit they fuck up your leave because now they're not there long enough to earn like any real benefits yeah you know like you still have your health care or whatever that'll get you but like your you, you like your PTO time and your vacation time and your sick time, like again, we're talking about a company that makes over a billion dollars a day. day. Yeah, like fuck, man. How much money is enough? When I worked at Walmart way back when, my youth, of yeah. my early twenties, I remember that's when they started because that's when everything really started taking the downhill in the corporate life. They just started implementing the oh, you've been here for twenty years. We're going to find a reason to fire you. Yeah. Because before that, they wanted people that have been there for 20, 30, 40. They wanted you to work at the company for a long time because you were wise. You knew how everything ran. You were seasoned. You knew, like, that's what kept a company healthy and going is the employees that liked being there and knew what they were doing. But at some point, they're just like, yeah, but now they have all these benefits and all this vacation time. And well, you know, like, how many fucking in the last. Let's say that like the last 10 years, how many things has like your company taken away every year? Where, at least, whether it's at a, least one thing a year. Like one benefit or one extra bonus or one pay raise or just something. Almost well, every company always takes away something. Well, well, that's like Walmart. They used to have a quarterly bonus for their associates and it would go by. That's the what it was store, when I worked there. Yeah. And it would go by what the what each store made and how many hours you worked which incentivized the employees to work hard to make more sales yeah no bonus again a company that makes over a billion dollars a day can't afford to give their employees a quarterly bonus of a couple hundred bucks maybe a couple hundred yeah i think like the most i've ever seen was maybe like two something Three, like, at the absolute most during, like, the holiday yeah. season. And we're talking about a company that the employees by far exceed the owners in charity, you know, paying into yeah. charities. The employees who make nothing already give more to charity than the people who own and run the company. Mm-hmm. Fucking disgusting. So there's real no there's no real way to solve any of these problems without violence, I think. It's just you need a big, like, just restart button. Yeah, people are sick of it, and this is the problem. Now we're at this weird time where everyone's aware of how fucked we're getting. Yeah. Every single thing we're saying is not anything everybody no, doesn't no, know. No, it's nothing new. Not only do people know they're getting fucked, they even know how they're getting fucked tax-wise mm-hmm. anymore, how they're getting fucked with fake inflation, and uh, just like all these fake... Like, everyone just knows. Like, all this stuff is just made up, and it's fake, and we have everything that we could want and need, but we just... Greed. Greed mm-hmm. has taken over. But the problem is... People will not give up even the most minor comforts they have to do something about it. Yeah. So nobody can organize. And even if they do organize, there's fucking sets in place to shut them down. You know, like there's uh, different presets from the government, from the companies, from everything. Because even Walmart, what? When people uh, went on strike in some of their stores, they just shut the store down. They said, fuck yeah, it. Yeah. Make enough money. I don't right, care. Yeah. So it's like, well, that uh, see, the strikes would only work if it was nationwide. Everyone was like, no, fuck Walmart. Shut them all down. Then what? Yeah. Then it's different. But they, uh, that just won't happen. Nope. At least not yet. Maybe by the airing of this episode. So it anyway. it be a revolution. A revolution. So anyway, folks, if you want to check out our non-dystopian work, <laughs> uh, well, you can check out mine at calebjamesk.com. You can check out Spencer's, which is a little bit different. You are the 
Winchester yeah. Weenie Wanker. No. Wa- Winchester Weenie Wiggler. Wiggler, yeah. Not Waggler, Wiggler. Wiggler. You could be a Waggler if you want. I don't care. A Wiggle and a Waggle. A little Wiggle and a Waggle. And you can follow us at DPW Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Do I have to say it? Yes. And X. On X. You can follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter. X. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. The logo's stupid. The name is stupid. Now, I got a fucking error message, and it just said, your X won't load. I'm like, what? Mm. Won't load? Fuck off. You know, that's the message. Of the day. Fuck off, Fuck corporate. Off. Corporate America, just any corporate, you know, fuck off. You blub, 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 you blub. Aroused.